For the first time in a long time, Xiaomi actually makes a Redmi phone really good you might want to buy just for the design. The Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus is the best looking Redmi phone yet, but right now it's only available in China. Global launch is likely in January, but some of us are impatient. Xiaomi released the Note 13 Pro Plus few months ago as a China-only device and every fan of the Redmi series or tech enthusiasts took interest, including yours truly. Now in all honesty, I actually picked up this device mostly because I like what they did with the design. Normally I would have waited for the global launch but we all know Xiaomi might make this version exclusive to China. I didn't want to take any chances plus there seemed to be a lot of interest in it from my audience so I decided to pick one up. Correct me if I'm wrong but this is the first device in the Redmi series with a leather finish. But not to praise the device too much, looks are not everything. Leather finish aside, what makes this device special? What is under the hood hides the software and overall experience? That is what we hope to find out with this review. The Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus costs about $350 when I got mine but I can see it's already going for about $320. I got it from Gistop. You can also pick one up from AliExpress or through eBay if you don't want to wait for the global launch. However, it has the Chinese ROM so bear that in mind. The seller had Gistop installed Play Store and the necessary needed Google services so I didn't really get to remove the SIM myself but I did a factory reset after getting it and still found my way around getting Play Store and my required Google apps installed. You can actually install Play Store directly from the Get Apps application so it's not that difficult to get Play Store working. It supports English so you can select that when you set it up. You can remove all of the pre installed Chinese apps you don't need. Note that while it's set to English and you have Play Store installed, you still get Chinese notifications. You can disable notification access and you're pretty much good to go on a cleaner experience. The Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus is a really slick phone and I do hope this leather version gets released globally. Now there are two other color options, I think there is black and white, both of them have glass on the rear. This one is multicolored with the majority of the back panel in purple, while the camera area has light blue and the part with the Redmi branding is of light green. Not quite sure what color to classify the part having the flash, but you get the gist, it's multicolored or multicolored however you like to pronounce that, but not in a way that looks unpleasant, as a matter of fact, it gives it that unique look. Xiaomi were kind enough to listen and put in a better quality protective casing, not the typical transparent one that changes color over time. But as good as this case is, it looks terrible having it on this leather version. It actually hides the beauty, yeah, it doesn't look great. Now, if you're fancying getting this version and you want a case on it, you might have to go for a transparent one. Personally, I've been using mine without the case, so if you are going the same route, you also want to maintain it properly and be wary of stains that might not go away. So far, mine looks just fine. It has flat frames, flat enough to stand on its side, top or bottom frame without support. It looks like the frame is made of aluminium. Now I like the leather finish, it's a lot better than the high gloss we got on the Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus from earlier this year. If you actually pay attention to the design in comparison with its predecessor, aside the leather finish, it is pretty much the same thing, particularly the camera arrangement. Just remove the camera bump and you have the same camera pattern. But I love that it looks significantly different and much better nonetheless. But now that I think about it, it actually looks more like the Redmi Note 12 Turbo. With the Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus, we finally get proper ingress protection. That is an IP68 rating for water and dust resistance. I believe that's a first for Redmi phones. They have always been stuck at IP53. So, good news, you can now dip your Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus in water for some time with no fear. I'll still avoid salt water and chlorinated pool water though. Now, I also love the fact that it comes with a curved AMOLED display. Some might prefer flat displays, but I think curved displays are awesome. This one looks great. It's OLED and has HDR10 Plus support, Dolby Vision, and it's Gorilla Glass Victors protected. Also, it got up to 1800 nits in peak brightness, so using it outdoors is not going to be a problem. The other brightness works fine for the most part, but sometimes the brightness just goes all the way down, especially when gaming. I'm not sure what's responsible for that, but hopefully a software update can fix. The refresh rate is 120Hz, but in my experience, it is buttery smooth. You only get the option to set it to either 60 or 120 or leave it at the default which adjusts it automatically. I have mine set at default and I've observed that it goes at low as 30 hertz when on the always on display. I think you can see that. The software experience here has been very smooth, bug free so far. It is MIUI 14 and Android 13. Not sure when we are getting Xiaomi's new HyperOS here. Also remember this is not the global ROM so the entire software experience might be different from the global version. Now in terms of the viral experience using this, I observed that the haptics are great, not too strong, subtle but in a good way. Also the Wi-Fi connectivity is a lot better than I've experienced with some Xiaomi or Redmi devices. If you saw my review of the Xiaomi 13T, I complained of delays with notifications when on Wi-Fi. I've not experienced that here. Now it's a phone with 5G support, you'll have no problems using it here in Nigeria. 
We get stereo speakers which sound great, not exceptional but loud and of good quality. There is no SD card slot here nor a headphone jack. Yeah, the headphone jack is gone. Also, the fingerprint scanner is no longer side mounted, it is now optical, placed lower on the display. It works just fine but sometimes there is a slight delay to unlock, other times it works just fast. The Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus comes with 12 gigs base RAM and 256 gigs of UFS 3.1 storage. Now that is faster storage than the UFS 2.2 on the previous generation if I'm correct. One area I'd say Xiaomi has significantly improved this over its predecessor is the processor. We're getting the MediaTek Dimensity 7200 Ultra, which offers solid and stable performance. The benchmark scores are looking good for those interested in numbers. For Antutu though, my first test produced lower than expected results and the second test produced significantly better results. But in actual real world use, I've had no cause for concerns about the processor performance and I'd say it's more than enough for its price. I dare say much better than we even got in the Dimensity 1080 we got on the 12 Pro Plus. It's a 4 nanometer processor. Now, nothing I've thrown at the Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus has gotten it to heat up, and I think that's commendable. The heat management is really good, even when I've had long sessions of Call of Duty gaming. The leather rear finish might contribute, so I don't know if the same will be the case for the ones with glass rear, or it's probably just the graphene based cooling system being efficient. With that said, the gaming experience here has been solid. With Call of Duty Mobile, you can play at very high frame rates when you set the graphics to very high or reach max frame rate by dropping the graphics to high. To get ultra frame rates, you can only do that at low graphics. PUBG Mobile also plays just fine, allowing you graphics option up to HDR and ultra frame rate. You can get extreme frame rate when the graphics is set to smooth. Now, as I mentioned before, a few times I've put this through at least an hour of gaming at different times and did not have it go abnormally hot or lag. A core mobile gamer can probably push it further, but as a casual gamer, I'd say you have no worries with the Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus. The battery on the Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus is 5000 mAh and it lasts just as good as you'd expect, giving you a full day of average to heavy use. It supports 120 watts charging and it comes with a charger in the box. Xiaomi claims it can charge from 0 to 100 in 19 minutes but that's not my experience. It took about 23 minutes to charge from 18 to 100% even with boost charging enabled. Now even when I had the Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus, I never got it to charge from 0 to 100 in less than 30 minutes. Don't get me wrong, charging your phone full in 30 minutes is super fast, more than enough charging speed. Just know that you might not get the advertised 19 minutes. And no, even with the phone powered off, it doesn't make much difference. Now let's come to the camera department. The configuration here is pretty much the same as its predecessor. 200 megapixel main camera with OIS, 8 megapixel ultra wide and a 2 megapixel macro camera which I don't think anyone would use. The selfie camera remains 16 megapixels. The rear cameras take good pictures with great colors. The inconsistency I experienced with HDR while using the Note 12 Pro Plus is not present here. The images come out great. With portrait mode, the Note 13 Pro Plus still struggles with subject separation sometimes. Low light images come out fine as long as it is not too dark. The selfie camera image processing has always been a weak point on Redmi devices and not much has changed with the Note 13 Pro Plus. The images actually come out good in the right lighting condition but I think it can be better. For videos, you are able to shoot at 4K 30 frames per second from the rear camera only. I said the stabilization is great for a mid-range device. You also get the option to shoot at 4K 24fps or 1080p 60fps. On the selfie cameras with most Xiaomi mid-range phones, we are stuck at 1080p 60fps. Okay, so one thing about Xiaomi's devices, uh, particularly the Redmi and their mid-range devices, is the fact that from the selfie camera they only do 1080p 60fps and the Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus is a device with a processor that should be capable of shooting uh, 4K but Xiaomi doesn't do that for reasons best known to them. The Infinix 035D has a lesser dimensity 8020 and that can shoot 4K 60fps from both the selfie and the rear camera. So if you fancy shooting 4K from your selfie camera, you might want to go for that as an option. It should be around the same price as Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus. But then, what do you think about the 1080p 60fps video quality? And then what do you think about the sound quality? Because I'm outside by the road, so it might be a bit noisy. The Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus is a solid phone and I really hope the exact same specs get released globally. Also, this leather version. It is an improved device in most areas over the Note 12 Pro Plus and I'll say it's a solid successor. Since the Redmi Note 10 Pro, this phone I'd really say checks pretty much all the boxes for me. That's assuming we get the same when launched globally. Also, we still need some improvements to image processing, especially with selfie. I really didn't find satisfaction with the Note 11 and 12 series and I'm sure most Redmi fans will agree with me, but this one is solid. With that said, you can wait for the global launch or if you're impatient like me and you're cool with the Chinese ROM, you can pick up this one. If you've enjoyed this video, you should definitely check out my review of the Xiaomi 13T right here or this way for another video YouTube believes you like as well. I'm out.